Good evening and welcome to another edition of Contemporary Living with Farming Hill. We, um, if you're on YouTube, please follow our YouTube page at Contemporary Living with Farming Hill. Please subscribe to our YouTube page. If you're on Facebook, you can follow us at Contemporary Living with Farming Hill. My wife, she posts a lot of positive information on there each and every day, so you will be inspired. And if you're in the Chicagoland area, you can find us every Thursday night on Comcast Channel 19 at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I'm going to jump right into tonight's message, and I'm going to talk about, are you really that great? And so we had an opportunity to go to Orlando, Florida for a vacation a week ago, and I prepared this message. I was just sitting there, and I really got to thinking, you know, are we really that great? You know, we look at greatness and we, we when we look at greatness we we glorify mafia um type figures and when we look at greatness we think of athletes and we think of rappers and we think of million dollars and we, and we think about fancy cars when we, we you know when we when it boils down to greatness but tonight I got to ask you and I got to ask myself are we really that great and a lot of times we associate greatness with money and, and you got the the nice cars and you have the nice women and and not only that we we label greatness as having a a big church or we got the praise dance or we make it millions of dollars and to in today's world we label that as greatness but today we're going to look into the word of god and see what the bible says about greatness for we know in the Bible, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightfully dividing the word of truth. So tonight we're going to go into the word of truth, and we're going to look at God's word. And tonight I hope we're going to, we're going to examine the scriptures, and most importantly, we're going to examine ourselves to see whether we be in the faith. We're going to examine ourselves tonight and ask ourselves, are we really that great all right so we know that the bible like i said tells us in second timothy to study to show ourselves show ourselves approved unto god so we're going to jump right into it and i'm going to go to our first verse here as we look into the scriptures and we're going to go to luke chapter 9 verse 46 through 48 and it reads then there arose a reasoning among them and it's talking about the disciples here which of them should be the greatest. And Jesus, in verse 47, perceiving the thought of their hearts. See, God knows the hearts of men. And a lot of times we think that we're great because we do this or, and we do that and we don't do this here, but God knows the heart of, the, of individuals. And we go out there and, and you see on social media, we talk about, oh, we went and helped the homeless today. And, and you see people, they take their selfies and they, they post it all on social media just to, to get recognition. But I have to ask you tonight, as I ask myself, are we really that great? And as the verse reads on in verse 47, it said, Jesus perceiving the thought of their hearts. See, God knows the hearts of men. And God knows if somebody is doing it willingly, willingly, or are they doing it just for eye service. I think about the Martin Luther King speech, the drum major instincts. And he talked about how everybody want to be great and how everybody want to be out front. But, but he said, it's okay. But if you want to be out in front, what is your alternative motive? What, what, what are you trying? to be great for are you what do you want to be seen or do you really want to help someone and then it says in verse 7 that Jesus took a child and he set him by him so he took the child and Jesus set the child by him and then verse 48 says and said unto them whosoever shall receive this child in my name receiveth me and whoso whoso shall receive me receiveth him that sent me, for he that is least among you all, the same shall be great. So Jesus letting them know that if you want to be great, you have to humble yourself. See, greatness ain't in the cars. It is not in the houses. It's not in the mansions. It's not in the basketball game. It's not in the football game. Greatness comes when you humble yourself and you begin to serve the one and only God. But not only that, you become, you go out there and you begin to serve 
humanity. But but we're going to look deep into the scripture because tonight I'm asking each and every one of us a question. Are we really that great? We we go out and start churches and we go out and start organizations. We say, well, well we're going to make it a nonprofit, see, and I'm going to get these, uh, these entities going and I'm going to get all this LLC going. But are you really trying to help somebody or are you really trying to be seen? And we're going to look into the scriptures tonight and you're going to understand that Jesus Christ in his infinite wisdom that when he walked this earth he didn't need no credentials he didn't need no organization because the things that he did for mankind he did it out of the love for each and every one of us as we go into the next verse and it reads um, we, we're here at Luke chapter 22 through 24 so you gotta understand we just I'm gonna back up here now follow me now we was at just Luke chapter 9 verse 46 through 48 but the same question comes back up. Here we are in Luke 22 through 24, and it reads, And there was also strife among them. Now these rascals are fighting. There's division among the disciples because they want to know who was the greatest. And it, re it reads, Which of them should be accounted the greatest? And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that ex exercise them, Authority upon them are called benefactors. Verse 26 reads, But ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief, as he that doeth serve. So once again, we see servitude at its best. If you want to be great, learn to serve. If you want to be somebody in God, learn to serve. You look at people like Mahat Gandhi, or you look like as you look at people like MLK, these are perfect examples of individuals that came and served just like Christ. <coughs> verse, excuse me, verse 27 reads, For what for whether is greater he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth? Is not he that sitteth at meat? The question was asked. He reads on, But I but I am among you as he that serveth. So Jesus let you know he is one that serveth. Verse 28 reads, Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. Verse 29 reads, And I am appointed unto you a kingdom, as my Father have appointed unto me. So Jesus is letting the disciples know that not only I'm going to give you a kingdom with me, <clears throat> but also, if you want to be great, you must learn how to serve. And a lot of times we don't want to serve. We don't want to work our way up. We want to be great. We, we all want to be seen. But there's nothing wrong with want to be seen. But why do we want to be seen? As I read verse 30, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on, on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So we see in Luke 9 and Luke 22 that these rascals, they was, they was into it. And they was all about vain glory. They was individuals that wanted to be seen. And God knew their hearts. And he told them, if they humble themselves and serve, they will be great. So if you want to be great in today's world, if you want to be great in life, when you stand before God and when he gives you your heavenly position, if you want to be great, you must first learn how to serve. As we go on. <clears throat> one of my favorite verses in the Bible, Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 through 11 reads, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind, of one mind. So Jesus said you got to have the same love, be on one accord and one mind. Not only that, verse 3 reads, let, not, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. See, when you, when you, when you become a servant, it's not about vainglory. You ain't, you ain't trying to be seen. You're not all on social media bragging about what you done did and who you done did it for. You know, we all, when it comes to social media, we all victims. You know, somebody did this to me. Somebody jealous of me and things like that there. But in reality, God do not want us to be striving, yet alone have vainglory. 
as verse 4 reads, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. See, we in a world, we're so concerned about self. We self-centered. We, we think about our own self and everything we going through and my problems and I, 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 I. But we never consider our fellow brothers and our fellow sisters and we make life about us. And that's the matter with the world today. We're so stuck on us that we can't be a blessing to others. Here it was. The disciples had greatness sitting right next to them, working with them, eating with them, sleeping with them, drinking with them, and didn't even recognize greatness in his presence. So understanding if you want to be great, and Jesus was showing them how to be great. He came and he became a servant, as we're going to see in the verses to come. And he goes on to read, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which, is also, which, which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took, uh, and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. So I tell you, he didn't, want to, he didn't come here for no reputation. People knew who Jesus was because of the love that he had for his fellow brothers and sisters. People knew about Jesus because of the kindness and, the, and him dying on the cross for each and every one of us. He wasn't looking for recognition. He didn't want to be seen. As a matter of fact, when he was on the cross, he still died for each and every one of us. He told him, he said, look, I could call, I mean, I'm paraphrasing right now, I could call angels down, legions, to stop the whole show. But God was obedient even until the death of the cross, as we read on. And it reads in verse 6, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Remember he told, told the disciples earlier, be humble and be a servant. And we see in this, in this chapter that not only was he a servant, but he was humble. And he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. But look what happens in the end. Look what servitude does. Look what being humble did for him. Watch this here. See, being humble and being a servant will put you in great places. And we're going to see that in the next verse. And it says, Wherefore God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. See what servitude do? Are you really that great tonight? When you look at your life, ask yourself, am I really that great? Am I serving God? Am I serving humanity? Or am I trying to be seen for vain glory? Ephesians. You want to be great? Let me tell you. Because contemporary living, we deal with solutions. You want to be great? Let me teach you how to be great tonight. One way, I'm going to tell you three ways to be great. For one, you got to be humble. You got to be serving. You got to be a servant. Become a servant. And third, you got to tell people about the grace of God, which saves all mankind today in the age of grace. So when you run across your brothers and sisters, you want to be great? Tell them this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. That is the gospel of your salvation tonight. Not only that, y'all, you see the way I, every night, every time you see contemporary living, I close in a certain way. I talk about God's unmerited favor. If you want to be great, you tell people about 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 through 4, because now you are saving souls. And the Bible tells us that the angels in heaven rejoice over one soul. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 3 through 4, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, for that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. As I close it out, I'm going to read the Psalms of David, chapter 26. That is how you be great. 
you humble yourself as a little child, you become a servant because you want to do it. You do it from the kindness and the pureness of your heart. But not only that, you tell people about the finished works of Christ on the cross that mankind can be saved. God ain't worried about your house, your car, and all that stuff. Ultimately, he is concerned about your salvation because this life here is going to end. But it was, it was, you, you may have 100 years to live. You may live 65 years. You may live 75. But rest to assure that each and every one of us is going to meet that day. And that day is going to come when we least expect it. See, life on earth is temporary. But there's a life after that that's eternal. But if you want to be great, become a servant and tell people about the goodness of God and the gospel of the grace of God that saves all mankind. But as I close, like I said in Psalms, verse, um, Psalms 26, I'm going to start at verse 1. And this is King David talking. And this is, this is the prayer or this is the psalm that each and every one of us ought to present to God, in my opinion. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins in my heart. For thy loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. David walked in the truth. And David wanted God to try him and test him to make sure that he was walking in the faith. To make sure that he had God's interest at heart. As I read on, I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with this dissemblers. I have hated the congregation of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, and I will confess thine altar, O Lord, that I may publish with thy voice understanding, with thy voice of thanksgiving, I'm sorry, and tell of thy wondrous works. See, David's going to tell about God's wondrous works. And he tells you he didn't sit with evildoers. And yet alone, he's tell, telling you how he trusted in God and how he kept God's word and how he was not there for vain glory. Are you really that great tonight? Are we really that great tonight when it comes to the scriptures? Lord, I have loved thy habitations of thy house and the, in, the, in thy place wherein thy honor dwelleth. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men. Um, who handled is mischief, whose hand, I'm sorry, and whose hands in mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk my in my integrity, redeem me, and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an even place, and the congregation I will bless with the Lord. So David, despite his faults and failures, he still trusted in God. He still was a servant. He didn't sit with evildoers. He didn't take bribes. See, one thing about ministry, you can't buy ministry. I don't care what you see on television. The grace of God cannot be purchased. The grace of God and the word of God is something that should be given freely to all men. Should nobody be giving you a million dollars to preach? Should nobody be giving you $300, $1,000 to preach? Should nobody be giving you $500 to preach? Should nobody be giving you $50 to preach? Because the word of God has already been paid for on the cross. And as freely as it was given, freely we should give back to others. So you can't buy Christ. I don't care what people say. I don't care what man say. I don't care what the world say. Christ is not for sale because he already came and paid the ultimate price when he died on the cross for each and every one of us. So as always, as I close out tonight, we thank God for his unmerited, undeserved favor called grace. For grace is the total absence of any works. You can't buy grace. You can't sell it. You can't tarry for it. It is simply what God has given to each and every one of us because we believe that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day for our justification. On behalf of myself, my lovely wife, Melissa, and contemporary living, be blessed. Have a good night.